everybody, and welcome to the first episode of an exclusive episode. I'm your host, Sam Culver. I'm here with Nikosh Nath and Trevor Dunn here today, and we're excited to talk about the NBA draft, free agency predictions, and lastly, if LeBron was able to triumphantly defeat Jordan in the GOAT debate. How are you guys doing? How are you doing, Nikosh? How are you doing, Trevor? Good, good. Ready to talk some about yeah, perfect. So, I mean, first first topic we should talk about, um, the NBA draft. What do you, Nakash, what is your thoughts about LaMelo Ball? There's been recent reports of him going number one overall um, to the Minnesota Timberwolves, and um, I was just interested to hear your thoughts of what you think of the 6'8 lanky point guard. Yeah, in my opinion, there's no doubt who the Timberwolves should draft, um, depending on if they trade that pick or not. If they end up holding the pick come draft night, I think they should take LaMelo Ball. There has been recent reports that they would either trade the pick for a guy like Bradley Beal or someone, or even take Anthony Edwards. I don't think they should take Anthony Edwards at all. Anthony Edwards, to me, has some slight problems, and LaMelo Ball, to me, has the highest ceiling without a doubt and the highest ceiling in this entire draft class. So if I'm the Timberwolves GM, I'm taking LaMelo Ball, or I'm trading the pick for a win-now superstar. Now, interesting of you to say that Edwards – you know, coming into the college basketball season prior, pre-coronavirus, he was considered undisputedly probably the number one pick of this draft. But in recent reports of his shooting struggles down at Georgia, um, many teams are kind of concerned of the of the young guard. Um, Trevor, what do we think about James Wiseman and the Golden State Warriors? What do we think about that possible matchup happening? Well, I mean, James Wiseman, I think he can really have a, a, a good fit with the Warriors. Some concerns are his um, lack of um, this ability to be enthusiastic about things. I feel like he's had like a lack of motor, obviously, going the back to the fact that he was suspended by the NBA for, um, you know, this controversial decision by getting – he got received money from Penny Hardaway. So – I, I think Wiseman has fallen from a lot of teams like top boards. I think someone like Obi Toppin maybe might be in that discussion area, or if they really, really were interested in going somewhere off the book, uh, Denny um, Adovici from Israel or uh, Devin Vassell from uh, Florida State. Devin Vassell, I think, is a great is a great guard. I think, you know, him coming over, transferring to Florida State, really solidified that team and was able to help them make a push last year in the March Madness tournament. Um, one recent report, however, was uh, many scouts have came out to say that Vassell's shooting form is actually um, not what GMs and coaches are looking for in the NBA, even though that Devin was able to shoot uh, an efficient 41% from three. Nikosh, what is your thought about that recent remark? I just hate when that I hate when NBA teams draft good shooters in college and then they try and change their jump shots. Some examples that come to mind are Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz was a great three point shooter at Washington. You know, that wasn't even considered one of his weaknesses. And it gets in the NBA and then forgets how to shoot a basketball. They had to get a physical therapist to, in order to make this guy shoot the three ball again. You know, other names like this include Jared Culver. Jared Culver had a nice shot at uh, Texas Tech, excuse me, and then he also um, changed his jump shot with the Minnesota Timberwolves. He's a, he's a terrible hinge in his shot now. And if it goes in, if it, if it goes in, I wouldn't fix it, is my opinion. I don't think that any NBA team should touch a, touch a jump shot that goes in. I agree completely. I think, I think what they're trying to do with, you know, Devin Vassell and even LaMelo Ball. I mean, you've heard the GMs talk about LaMelo's shots saying that they're not looking for that sort of two-handed fling with what he does. But he creates so much power from that jump shot. That's why he's able to pull up from like half court and splash it and give you that, you know, extra versatility along with his size. Um, but Trevor, let's go ahead and segue a little bit into free agency. Go ahead and give, you know, the listeners the lowdown on what, what is expected to be happening in this free agency, what you're feeling, and um, how it could look out for the 2021 NBA season. All right. Uh, yeah, so free agency this year has been, I would say, disappointing, to, to say the least. There's no really, like, marquee free agents that, if, like, pop up the screen compared to the last year. We had multiple marquee players go, for example, Jimmy Butler, um, 
Kawhi Leonard, uh, Paul, George. Paul George, of course. I mean, I mean, but that's, that's trades. That's thing. I think a trade is the thing that we're going to look forward to. And um, there's not. I think someone that's definitely in the move is Chris Paul for sure. Because while he had, they, they did make the playoffs. They say, okay, see, they lost in the first round. They fired their coach. I think they're definitely on a a rebuilding phase. So. A team, maybe like the Milwaukee Bucks, because ever since, you know, Giannis might be on the outs, they might try to acquire him to, you know, hopefully get their team back on track and try to convince him to stay. You know, more and more um, in this new era of the NBA, we see more superstars getting traded um, than in recent years. And I think that's partially just because teams are always trying to constantly adapt and change the way that, their offensive schemes match with um, match with their coaches. It seems like a lot of teams are trying to get into a new direction and a new era of basketball. Nikosh, I wanted to ask you furthermore regarding trade remarks. What do you think about the legitimacy of the Giannis rumors that we've been hearing potentially going to somewhere like the Heat, maybe even the Golden State Warriors if they can get Clay in that deal? But what are your thoughts on that rumor? Well, first of all, if you go to the Golden State Warriors, I will never watch the NBA again. <laughs> uh, let's get that straight. Um, no, but this is one of those things where, like, one day I'll think that he really is leaving Milwaukee, and the next day I'll be like, no, he's for sure staying. It's just interesting that this postseason, we didn't really get to see a fully healthy Milwaukee team in the playoffs. Obviously, he got hurt against the, uh, the Celtics, and wasn't, wasn't ever healthy ever since. And it's honestly just interesting to see if they do keep him, if they do add a third star, because I, I don't think Chris Milton's the second guy that you can win a championship with, obviously, like we saw. He had a couple of good games in the playoffs, but it isn't that, that premier second guy, you know, when he's almost – he's getting all up there in age. But the latest trade rumors that we've been hearing are the Miami Heat and the Dallas Mavericks. And at, for the Dallas Mavericks, if they were to get Giannis Antetokounmpo, they would need to trade at least Chris Ops Porzingis, and maybe even more – to settled that probably Chris Dobbs two first round picks and a couple well, maybe Tim Hardaway Jr. but mm-hmm. as far as far as the heat they'd have to give up at least some of their young core within maybe I don't know if Bam Bam's probably untouchable at this point Tyler Hero probably would be in trade talks Duncan Robinson Kendrick Nunn you know players like that but I don't know this is a really interesting situation that I think we'll definitely keep an eye on this is probably the biggest story of the NBA just to see where he, he him Anthony Davis guys like that go. So I don't know. We just have to wait and see to see what happens. Well, we can all argue that this NBA season, the upcoming NBA season is definitely going to be probably one of the most competitive NBA seasons that we've seen in the last decade, at least. Mm -hmm. I think that goes without saying any question. And I truly believe that a team like the Miami Heat or a team like the Dallas Mavericks could totally be in play and would pull the trigger on a Giannis trade. But if you're looking at a Milwaukee Bucks standpoint, like point of view, you're wondering to yourself, oh, is it worth it if I'm giving up Chris Stapps and all these, all these players just for Giannis? It's really hard to match value. And I think that's where teams like the Clippers have screwed up in the past, matching value for Paul George. It's just – it's hard to really match a true value for a superstar if you're going to trade for one. But I definitely think that this free agency is going to be an interesting one and full of tons of surprises. Without a doubt, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, next, I would love to talk about how the Lakers won the championship. Do you think that it's enough for LeBron – you know, to cement his legacy as the greatest of all time. Do you think that Jordan still has one more? Trevor, let's go ahead and start with you. How are you feeling about the Lakers uh, championship? Uh, again, it was a it was a it was a great success for the Lakers. I, I feel great, you know, after the passing of Kobe Bryant. This is exactly what the Lakers organization needed. I mean, they had a, a definite downward spire after. I mean, there the twenty tens, the mid twenty tens have just been very disappointing for the Lakers and. This is something that we can we can hold on to and say, you know, we did it. We came back from this adversity, and it's something great. But going back to LeBron versus Jordan, but I still have Jordan number one, and it's a very tough decision because I think you have to measure it in one certain way. It's um, it's it's peak over uh career greatness. And I think maybe LeBron has the better career overall. He just like match up by year and year success and how good he's been at this age. You might be able to give the edge to LeBron, but. When I look at peak success, I still think Jordan still gets the edge over LeBron. 
I can totally see that. Nikosh, how about yourself? What are you feeling about the Jordan-LeBron debate? How are you feeling? Well, as a Bulls fan and a huge MJ GOAT supporter, I hate to say it, but it, it is a lot closer now. You know, and my only my only thing is that he's, he's playing with a top five player in the NBA, which, I mean, MJ also did with Scottie Pippen, but not to the level degree that Anthony Davis is. You know, uh, MJ never had the teammates LeBron did, but – I, that's, I don't know if that's a fair argument anymore, but it's definitely close, you know, and I think, you know, at the end of his career, he'd probably look at the scoring record, and if he were to do that and win finals MVP and other finals, he would, that would probably give him the, the right to call him the GOAT, you know, five rings, finals, five finals MVPs, and he'd probably get a lot more records on the way, which I think is probably enough for his accolades to go up, but there are definitely blemishes in his career, but it would be the longevity in his career that we would appreciate more at that point. So, I don't know. We have to wait and see. Right now, I, I still have MJ as a GOAT, 100%. LeBron has to do a little bit more, but it's not much. 100%. I completely agree with you on that. I feel like if LeBron is able to get another finals under his belt, another finals MVP, and take the Lakers to the championship next season, um, I feel like that that will solidify him more than the GOAT. I still, personally, for me, believe LeBron James is the greatest player of all time. That's personal bias just because I believe I've watched LeBron play and I never got to see what Jordan was like in his era. So that's where I stand on it. But I think that basketball fans all around the world can agree that this NBA season is going to be one for the books. I think, you know, the competitive nature of it, the, the, the number of superstar duos that teams have, it's absolutely crazy. The East is only getting more competitive along with the West. The West is definitely the more dominant conference, in my opinion. But I think that NBA fans all around the world can agree that this season is going to be one full of hard-fought battles. All right, guys, one last topic I wanted to talk to you about is MVP predictions. Obviously, you have a lot of good players coming back into the league, like Kevin Durant. A lot of, play, a lot of teams are going to have more duos now. Um, Nikosh, why don't you go ahead and get it started and just give us your early, way too early MVP season prediction. Uh, well, for me, it's the guy from the Western Conference. I think that if the Dallas Mavericks – make a splash in free agency, add just one more legit scar. I definitely think Luka can win MVP next year. He's, he's putting up numbers like no one's ever seen before. I think last year's stats, 29, 9, and 8. You know, it's a near triple-double in his second year, which is insane. Uh, he will be a, one of the top five players in the league for the next decade, I, I can imagine. Just for me, it's Luka Doncic winning MVP next year. Uh, I think the Mavericks can be a top five team in the West. I agree with that completely. I think Luca is probably one of the top options for MVP right now. I mean, we can see what that kid could do with his potential in the bubble. I mean, like the sky is truly limitless for someone like that, for someone like Luca. And that whole Mavs team actually just became un or all tradable besides Luca and Kristaps too. So, like you were saying, that third piece could really be coming in a lot sooner than expected. Trevor, what are your thoughts about the MVP race next season? Yeah, uh, Luca is definitely, I think, uh, a front runner for next year for for sure. He's at the top of my board. Another guy I've been looking at very closely is Jason Tatum, because the team around him is fit is fit very well for him to succeed. And if they can just uh, build off the success they had this year, I mean, they made the Eastern Conference Finals, went uh, six games. They can definitely, I think, he can definitely have a breakout year this year and just light up the league. He has all the talent in the world great shooter, pretty decent rebounder. And he if he just works on his passing ability a bit more, I think that's something that I, I want to see for the next year to have him make that that jump because I think he's definitely a, a top five player in the East and could be a top five player in the NBA as a whole. I agree. I agree with that completely. I think that this year's MVP race is going to be a lot more like like a lot more different than people are expecting it or anticipating it to me. I feel like this is probably one of the most like wide open MVP races we've ever had, just due to the fact that they're literally like this, all the stars on every single team are so dispersed now throughout the NBA. But 
I definitely feel as though this MVP race is going to be one to remember for sure. I agree. I'm excited. It's going to be a great season. And with that, we're going to go ahead and conclude the first episode of our exclusive podcast. Trevor and Nikosh, thank you guys so much for coming on, being a part, talking basketball, and letting everyone listen your, to your thoughts and your voices. Yeah, thanks, thank guys. guys. A lot of fun. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. And thank you guys for listening back home. <laughs>